alien abductees of Reddit or people who have claimed to see a UFO, what's your story? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. nineteen ninety seven colorado springs colorado i was eight years old playing in the sand volleyball court at the park down the street from my house i was engrossed in my activity burying my collection of happy meal toys in the sand and then digging them back out repeat i was looking down but decided suddenly that i needed to look up because the world around me had lost all sound there was no longer any ambient noise no traffic noise from the busy streets just a block over no more dogs barking, no more birds chirping. I looked at the street that bordered the park, and that is when I saw it. It looked like a stealth bomber turned sideways, nose leading, one wing down toward the road and the other pointed up at the sky. Completely shiny black in color, as tall as a house, shaped like an arrowhead. It was cruising the street at 3 miles per hour, just gliding over the road. I watched it for maybe 20 seconds. As soon as it had passed behind some two-story houses and out of my sight, I got my hearing back full force. I ran home with my piss-soaked pants and never spoke a word of it to anybody. I was on a wildfire just south of Doug Way Proving Grounds in Utah. We were in fire rigs driving to the incident area, four trucks in close convoy, when we heard helicopters. Eight black military choppers escorted us in formation for like 10 miles. We assumed they were just doing drills and using us for fake target practice or something. A little while later, we are parked and about to start hiking to the fire line when suddenly a thin column of smoke shoots probably about 200 feet into the sky. It was a good mile away, but the concussion was pretty significant when it hit us and the noise was still ridiculously loud. We thought it was probably no big deal, we knew we were near a strike zone. A good five minutes later, an aircraft like nothing I have ever seen flew by us at maybe 500 feet. It was flat black and sort of rectangular, but with fins and wells on the underside. It was moving pretty slow and was dead silent, so I have to assume it was some sort of stealth glider. It sounds ridiculous, but it immediately reminded me of a huge flying bat mobile, Time Burton era. After that some military personnel got on our radio frequency and instructed us to leave the area immediately, when our crew chief asked who it was and why they signed off and the incident commander, the guy in charge of managing the entire situation, came on the radios and said we were evacuating the area. They sent us to a completely different fire about a hundred miles to the south and never told us why except that it was higher priority which was BS, it was already out when we got there and we just assisted crews in the mop-up operation. The thing that confuses me about this is that if the army didn't want us to see that thing, or if it was dangerous, why didn't they keep us clear of the area in the first place? Either a communications breakdown or they had a now bad situation going down and had to get us out of there without warning. I can't say for sure what happened to me that night, but here is what I know. I was driving home for the weekend from school at Indiana University. It takes me about two hours to get home and I left Bloomington around 10 p.m. At exactly 10.53, I am on a rural stretch of the two-lane highway I take home, and I notice what appeared to be flashing lights behind me. I thought, great, I'm getting pulled over, so I turned onto the next country road about a quarter mile from where I noticed the lights. As the car came to a stop and I started to open my glove box to get out my registration and proof of insurance, the lights suddenly disappeared, and no car drove past. Now here is where the story takes a turn for the weird, and I am sure you guys will think I'm just making it all up, because it really does seem like something straight out of a typical UFO movie or story. The electronics in my car started to go haywire. The radio was randomly changing stations while the volume kept going up and down while the dome light and headlights start to flicker and turn off and back on. This was at 10.56 PM. I start thinking to myself that my battery must be failing, or else I have a short somewhere in the electric system of my car. So I lean down to pop the hood so I can take a look at the battery, and that is the last thing I remember doing. The next thing I know, I open my eyes and see nothing but the night sky full of bright stars. It was a cold night and it seemed like I had never seen stars that bright in my life. I sat up and looked around, and I saw absolutely nothing, nothing at all. I was in the middle of a field, surrounded by corn stalks left over from the recent harvest. As I started to come to my senses, I started to freak out. 
Where am I? Why the hell am I asleep in the middle of a field? Where the hell is my car? I got up and started walking toward the distant headlights I could see from a road about half a mile away. When I got to the nearest intersection, I looked at the signs which read 350 north and 50 west. I was half a mile away from my car which was just right off the main road. I started walking toward the headlights I could see on the main road. I can't say how long it took me to walk the half mile, but it couldn't have been more than 10 or 15 minutes. When I arrived at my car, all the lights were out, my battery had died, which struck me as odd because I couldn't have been gone for that long. I looked at my phone which was sitting on the passenger seat, and the time was 2.17 am. Over three hours had passed since I turned off onto the side road for the flashing lights behind me. I remember sitting in my car completely dumbfounded, wondering what the hell had just happened to me. After about half an hour of just sitting there, I remembered that my battery was dead, so I got on the phone and called a AAA to come out and give me a jump. It took about an hour for them to get out to me, since I was a good distance away from the nearest town, during which time I just sat in silence, running through the possible scenarios in my head concerning what had just happened. To this day, I couldn't tell you what really happened to me that night. All I know is I can't think of any plausible explanation as to why I woke up over half a mile away from my car in the middle of a cornfield more than three hours after I had stopped. I have only shared this story with one other person, my uncle. I am sure people would either look at me like I'm crazy or they would call BS on the whole story, and I can't blame them. If somebody came to me with a story like that, that so closely mirrors the stereotypical encounter story, I probably wouldn't believe them either. I've seen a couple of weird lights occasionally, and I have no recollection of being abducted, but, when I was 12 or so, I felt something hard and round in my earlobe. I told everyone and they said it was just an under the skin zit, pretty normal for someone my age, but it was there for 6 months. Annoyed, I decided to do some self-surgery. I could feel it very near the surface and poked a hole in my ear with a sterilized needle. Blood everywhere, I could feel this thing and I squeezed up, towards the hole I just pierced. Out pops this tiny metal ball, maybe half the size of a BB. It was black metal, completely spherical, with an indentation around the center and teeny tiny golf ball-like indentations. As I was rolling it around in my blood-covered pictures, it slipped, spun around the sink a couple of times and fell down the drain. At 12, I had no idea what to do with it and my parents didn't believe a word I said and told me to just put some tea tree oil on my zits next time. I have never had anything like it since. I don't even know where to start. Maybe the most enlightening experience I had was this. I used to talk about these things that were happening to anyone who was willing to listen. I've become a little more reserved from being hurt a few times opening up. It seemed to me like the more I would try to inform people about what happened, the more experiences there would be. There was this guy named Adam that I was hanging out with for a while. I took him home from a friend's apartment one night at around 3 to 4 am, which was normal for that time period since I was sleeping until 4 in the afternoon. I had been trying to talk to people about this stuff non-stop, and when I took him to his house, we chilled and smoked in the driveway for a minute. All of a sudden, an intensely bright light appeared over the hill that was less than a mile from his house and we were both immediately drawn to it. I started looking around seeing if there was anything else happening, and I looked up. Above us were two orbs pivoting around and I drew his attention to them. I told him that I felt like they showed us that bright light to try and gauge our responses, and we just looked up and waved at the orbs. Then, all of a sudden, the sky came to life. There must have been three dozen orbs flying around in every which direction and over the horizon streaks started taking off. It was definitely a spiritual experience. I have a couple more experiences with orbs. I was on a friend's back porch who lived near me and he and I were both very interested in the topic. We were sitting there chatting in this bright light, maybe a couple hundred yards away starts drifting across the sky very slowly, very low, and silent. As it drifted, it brightened in intensity to the point we couldn't look directly at it. It was an orange light in color. It stayed lit a couple of seconds and then slowly faded out, and we just looked at each other in awe. That happened there a couple more times, once upon request. Naturally, people made fun of me for claiming that these things happened to me. We were trying to explain to a couple of friends what happened when we saw the orb and they didn't believe us, so I said, you wanna see a UFO? Come over here. 
No idea why, I was just feeling cocky. We get to the back porch where the first experience happened and sure enough, that light brightened up again and did the same thing. I've only had people with me for a few experiences. I've developed my own thoughts about what has happened to me, its origins, and why me. After my first big experience happened with the five crafts, I jumped online and started doing research. I feel almost as if I was led to this. I found this thing called the Raelian belief, or intelligent design. It basically states that ETs seeded human life on Earth through genetic manipulation, and we will eventually become so advanced that we'll seed life on other planets. It is very closely aligned with the ancient astronaut theory in stating that ETs have played a role in the development of human civilization in multiple ways. The way the Raelian belief started is from this dude Rael, who claims he saw a UFO land in a dormant volcano in the 70s. He says he approached the craft and out came a small humanoid like ET that educated him about how all of our religions were wrong and stemmed from ancient ET misinterpretation. When I looked at it closer, when you think of instances like Ezekiel being lifted into the heavens, chariots of fire in the sky, or the light that guided Moses through the desert, it's not difficult to attribute it to ETs. The interesting thing was that the ET told him that every major prophet of every religion was manipulated by ETs via thought implantation to instill spiritual beliefs that compelled them to share their beliefs and spirituality with others. Not saying that I believe any of this, but the more that I spread the word about my experiences, the more they seem to happen. I can probably write a book about all this stuff. I was traveling back home with my mom from my aunt's house on a warm, sunny afternoon. While I was sitting in the passenger seat, an object just appeared in the sky a little to our left. We both saw it immediately. The size of it is what was shocking more than anything. It had the classic saucer shape and was shining brightly because the sun was reflecting off of it. We continued driving down the road a few seconds, just admiring this craft when all of a sudden, we saw something I still don't believe to this day. It just vanishes, disintegrates, disappears, whatever you want to call it. I looked back at my mom and I could tell by her expression she had seen the same thing. Since this sighting, I have always been interested in UFOs and the possibility of other life in our universe. This object in the sky was definitely not a helicopter, airplane, or a flock of geese. My mom and I still talk about the sighting we had and can't come up with a reasonable explanation as to what we saw that day. This is my UFO story and it is not a hoax or fabrication. Everyone always laughs at me when I tell this story, but that's fine, I know what I saw. Back in in spring of 1997, a group of us neighborhood kids were looking up at the night sky observing the hale bop comet. I grew up hours from any major city so the view was pretty clear. After a while, we started to notice a red and a white dot circling around each other making sudden movements in every direction, like no aircraft I have ever seen or have ever seen since. At a certain point, they merged into one craft then shot out three smaller crafts. Although we couldn't tell whether it was a craft, because they just appeared to be balls of light. This went on for a couple hours. Right before the lights disappeared, they accelerated at lightning fast speed into the darkness. We all went home terrified of what we saw. The next day on the front page of our small hometown paper, it said it received several calls, the explanation they gave was that the local airport was testing aircraft. I'm sure how much I believe that story because of what I saw. To this day, whenever I see my friends that were there that night, we'll sometimes talk about it. None of us can be sure what we saw but to this day, none of us have ever seen anything like it. Edray, West Virginia one night few years back, my friend, who is driving, and I were taking his girlfriend home when he decided to take the long way home. As we are driving along this fairly deserted back road, I began to zone out and I stare at this blinking red light off in the distance and casually think to myself, I wonder when they built a cell phone tower all the way out here. When suddenly, it blinks and is dramatically closer than it was just a moment earlier, at this point my friend points it out and stops in the road. It blinks once more and is directly in front and over top of us, the red light is so bright it floods the car in a deep scarlet hue. I lean forward so that I can see directly into the light, in that brief moment I feel a flood of negative emotions the closest description I can offer is to that of being naked under a giant microscope and having every pore examined thoroughly. I then look away from the light to my friend and ask him to drive, he barely responds apparently in a similar state. 
Then he snaps out of it and starts driving. As we get a little ways down the road, I notice the red light isn't fading and the interior of the car is still clearly lit by it. I look out the window into my horror, the light is following us and does so for approximately 1 to 2 miles. The light unexpectedly veers off to the left and comes down to ground level in a patch of trees adjacent to the road. My friend stops the car again and continues to stare at it and abruptly declares he is going to get out and look at like he is in some sort of trance. He opens the door and I grab his arm and tell him if he does, I will get in the driver's seat and leave him, that we had to leave that instant. He looks at me and seems to come to and punches the gas so hard the tires lose traction and spin. The light remained stationary as we rode away, but I've never looked at the night sky the same. My mom tells a story of her and her friend, let's call her friend Lisa. When my mom and Lisa were teenagers, they were up on the roof of Lisa's house, and they see a bright light in the sky. Next thing they know, the light is gone. Thing is, they think they've been on the roof for like 15 minutes, but something like 3 hours passed. Mom doesn't remember anything about what happened during that time, and Lisa simply refuses to talk about it. She would answer my mom with things like I don't know, and just drop it for a long time. So a couple months later, mom moves away and loses contact with Lisa for about 10 years. She finally meets up with her again and immediately notices that something is odd about Lisa. Lisa appeared very distant to her, with a very dreamy demeanor, like she was really happy and at peace, for no good reason. After they talk for a bit, Lisa brings up the incident on the roof. Mom says she still doesn't really remember anything about it. But Lisa remembers, she remembers everything. She said that at first, it was all in bits and pieces and she couldn't remember any of it clearly. She was confused and scared and wanted to avoid discussing it. Then, as time passed, she began to remember more of it. She remembers it all clearly, and she remembers the other three times she was abducted after that clearly as well. At first, they paralyzed her somehow and did all sorts of invasive experiments on her, but by the most recent time, they stopped probing her and began to talk with her. They didn't speak English or any other human language, but she could understand everything they said, even though she can't speak their language herself. Apparently, they told her all sorts of things, stuff about space, Earth itself, and most shockingly, predicted years beforehand that she would get pregnant in a specific year and it would also be a stillborn, and that she would never be able to have children again. They also told her that it was not their fault and they even made an attempt to save her from this fate, but they were unsuccessful. They also told her that they had abducted my mother. Another time, after that first incident. Mom says she has no recollection of any other potential abductions, but she does have recurring nightmares of being abducted, but she's almost sure that they're just that, nightmares. Anyway, Lisa tells mom that every time she speaks with them, she comes to understand the truth more and more. When mom inquires what the truth is, Lisa just says that you will know eventually, and she says that once she learned of the truth, then everything became wonderful. Mom has seen her a few more times over the years, we still live in another state from her, and she apparently has a pretty normal life, and doesn't like, obsess over alien stuff, like some supposed alien abductees do, she only ever brings it up in passing, not like it's a central part of her daily life. I'm leaving out time and location and some other details, because I'm still scared of what might happen with it publicly I guess. Summer before 8th grade, me and two of my friends snuck out at midnight to go walk around the neighborhood and go see these girls on the next block who were having a sleepover. We turn a corner in our neighborhood, and there's this huge black blimp-shaped thing in the sky, like the pictures of the Hindenburg but bigger than that and as close if not closer. Completely silent and the size of at least 4 to 5 football fields across no exaggeration, even though I was young. We stare at it entranced, asking each other over and over again if we see it, which we all agree that we do, standing there, frozen in one place. It's like black polished gunmetal, no lights, no sound, no anything, it's just hovering there. And then I don't know what happened, but time clearly jumps. Next thing I remember is the craft, ship, government experiment or whatever the hell it is, has gone, and there's a tiny glowing white barbell thing in the sky, seemingly slowly falling to earth with wisps of smoke coming off it. Then two brand new black trucks with silver gearboxes on the back, like F-150S or S-10s, but nicer came speeding down the street, going about 70 in a residential 25 miles per hour neighborhood. 
Then after that, I remember walking home to one of my friend's houses and going to bed. At that point, it was like 5 or 6 am and the sun was coming up. We all made a promise to tell my dad in the morning, because he worked for the city but we never did. I don't know what happened later in life to one of my friends who was there, but the other was my best friend, and we sort of made an unspoken pact never to talk about it, don't know how or why we did that. We all grew up and I sort of lost touch with him too. We did reconnect over Facebook and such over the years, but it was like there was something between us neither of us wanted to touch or talk about. Looking back on it now, there's no way we could have been the only ones to see it. It wasn't that late at night and it was over a heavily populated suburb of a major city. The idea of this has always scared me more than any sort of possible abduction scenario. That there were others and we're all voluntarily suffering a sort of collective amnesia, except in how we're not. I've thought about hypnosis, but that scare me too, plus I'm not sure if I'd trust the results, I was just a kid then and I'm not sure if I could trust the hypnotist. What I do know, again, is that there's no way it was just the three of us who saw it. We're talking a huge thing hovering in the sky directly above hundreds of houses just after midnight on a summer weekend night. But nothing on the news, nothing in the paper, nothing on TV, no word spoken about it again ever by anyone. This is a true story. I'm a little older than the average around here I think, but I know what creepypasta and stuff like that is. This happened, and there's no way I'm the only one who remembers, no way.